Today we're going to look at two of the top DAWs, that's digital audio workstations, for the iPad. Beatmaker 3 and Cubasis 3. But we're going to dive into the pros and cons of each and figure out which one is the better choice for you. What is up creatives? I'm Jarrell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. Make weekly tip and tutorial videos as well as product reviews on all things music production. If you enjoy that kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be the first to catch the next one. So it's no secret that the iPad is a capable machine for music production but it all comes down to how good the software is and we're looking at two of the best of the best those are beatmaker 3 and cubasis 3 and we're going to see which one's better so let's kick this off with price first cubasis 3 is 49.99 not the cheapest daw on the app store but definitely cheaper than most daws for pcs and macs beatmaker 3 comes in at 26.99 now that is cheaper than Cubasis 3, but there's some reasons for that and we'll get into that in just a minute. So when looking at each DAW, one of the first things to consider is the aesthetics. How does it look? Cubasis 3 definitely looks a lot more like a traditional DAW than an iPad DAW. It has a much more dynamic UI and feels more like the DAWs you would find on a Mac or a PC. Beatmaker 3, on the other hand, is much more monochrome and has a very flat UI. And some say it's a lot more similar to something like an MPC than a traditional DAW. Both DAWs are organized very well, albeit in very different ways. And if you ask me personally, I feel like Beatmaker 3 is easier to find the things you need than Cubasis 3 is. There's a lot packed into Cubasis 3, but the interface is a little busy in my opinion. Both DAWs have resizable playlist tracks and mixer channels. It's really easy to adjust them with simple pinch gestures to change the UI size. Now Cubasis has a little bit of a leg up here because you can resize almost anything just by dragging the panel up. That is a nice touch. Next up is input methods. Both support full MIDI support, Bluetooth MIDI support, and both recognize class compliant audio interfaces for plugging in microphones and instruments and things like that. Both DAWs have virtual MIDI keyboards in the program as well as virtual pads for playing things in, although I find the Beatmaker 3 pads much easier to use and more feature packed. Next up is ease of use. Is there a steep learning curve? In my opinion, Beatmaker 3 is much simpler to learn from the beginning than Cubasis 3 is. Everything is broken down into tabbed sections that are easy to navigate and things are just where you would expect them to be for the most part. Cubasis 3 on the other hand has a lot going for it. There's a lot of features packed in there, but things are kind of all over the place and finding certain menus to do certain tasks is a bit more confusing than it would be in Beatmaker 3. One thing I love about using Cubasis 3 is it's very easy to duplicate tracks including the MIDI data that is in them. All you have to do is click the channel and then click the duplicate button and it will copy that entire channel and all the MIDI data that was in that channel. There is no such feature in Beatmaker 3. Instead, you would have to do something like create a new bank, load up the plugin again, and then drag over the MIDI data from the top left menu. One thing that drives me pretty bonkers in Cubasis 3 is the lack of a stop button. There is a play pause button, which if you have any kind of instruments that have a tail on them, reverb or anything like that, if you press the play pause button, it will stop what you were playing and leave that long tail to drag out. That drives me crazy. <laughs> I wish I could just press a stop button that would make all audio cut off. Steinberg, if you're listening, please add a stop button. Now something that I highly dislike about Beatmaker 3 is this one feature that would be amazing if they included it. It's the fact that you cannot automate 
on off for your effects. So for example, if I have a reverb that I put onto an instrument and I want it to turn off and on at different times in the song, I would normally go and add an automation clip and put in my automation, but there is no on off for effects. They will give you a list of very helpful parameters for you to adjust, but there is no triggering them on and off. Intua, if you're listening, please add this to Beatmaker 3. We need to be able to automate on off for effects. As far as getting to know each program, I find that there are far more tutorials available for Beatmaker 3 on YouTube than there are for Cubasis 3. Now Cubasis 3 is slightly newer. Cubasis 2 has been around for quite some time, but even the amount of tutorials for Cubasis 2 I find is much less than Beatmaker 3 tutorials. So that can leave a knowledge gap if you're really trying to dig in and learn more about the program. Next up is stability. How well does the program function? Does it crash? Cubasis 3 is far more stable. And it's one of the main reasons that a lot of people have migrated from Beatmaker 3 to something else is because occasionally Beatmaker 3 has times where plugins won't load properly or sometimes a session will crash. For me, those instances are very limited. I have not had many of them, but I have heard reports of people that have them and I've even had a few glitches myself. So Cubasis 3 definitely wins in the stability department. So the next thing we're looking at is the built-in feature set. What sort of features, sounds, instruments, and things like that are included in each program? I have found that most tasks for creation and post-production can be handled with the included effects plugins, except for one. Cubasis, for whatever reason, does not support built-in side chaining. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's anybody out there that has figured out how to do this, but I have not found a way to side chain instruments to each other. Beatmaker 3 makes this very, very simple through their Dynamics Processor plugin, and it's one of the things I love about the program and one of the reasons I'm having a hard time using Cubasis. There are, however, third-party plugins, like the app called Push, that's in the App Store that will allow you to do side chaining within Cubasis 3, but there is no built-in plugin for it. Now, are the included effects any good? I find that in Cubasis, to be honest, the layout for each plugin is far better than the ones in Beatmaker 3. The plugins are far more powerful and far more visually appealing than the ones you find in Beatmaker 3. Now some things that each program does uniquely, Beatmaker 3 has this awesome feature where individual pads within one instrument can have each have their own mixer channel within the mixer tab. All you have to do is double tap on the instrument and you will see the whole list of mixers for that instrument. This allows you to do things like map effects directly to one instrument without having to split up your drums. This is what I use it for the most. I will play my drums in on the pads and then I can individually EQ and add effects to each instrument. For example, my kicks. I sidechain my kicks to a lot of different things so I can map that directly in Beatmaker 3. My snare, sometimes I wanna add reverb just to my snare but not to the rest of the kit. I can do that. Cubasis 3 has no such feature. There are not individual mixers for each pad on an instrument. Now, one thing that Cubasis 3 does uniquely well is the ability to very easily and very quickly crossfade individual clips. All you have to do is drag the top bar in or out to create that crossfading effect. That is nice. There is no such feature in Beatmaker 3. You can do that through an automation clip and that is the only way you can do it in the program. One more thing missing from Cubasis 3 is the ability to export individual MIDI tracks. That is a bummer. So in Beatmaker 3, you can press and hold on any bank and press MIDI export. And that will allow you to export the MIDI data just from that track. If you want to do something similar in Cubasis 3, the only thing you can do is export a full MIDI project, and that's called a mix down. And unfortunately, if you wanna drag that file into something like Beatmaker 3, 
it does not support it. Now there are other DAWs out there that will take a full-fledged MIDI file with multiple tracks in it, but unfortunately those Cubasis MIDI exports are not supported in Beatmaker 3. Next up is the included sounds and instruments. Now Beatmaker 3, like we said, is much cheaper, almost half the price of Cubasis 3, but that is also because it comes with less sounds included. Now you do get access to three kits for free if you go to the Beatmaker Sound Store. I find personally that those sounds are a bit more modern and better sounding in my opinion than the ones that come with Cubasis 3. But Cubasis 3 definitely comes with a lot more options. There are several instruments built into the program. Finally, file management. Both programs are organized well, but in Cubasis 3, it's very difficult to get your sounds mapped to the pads. Once you've gone through all the trouble to import those sounds into the My Samples area, getting those into a pad to play in, for example, if you want to play drums, is quite the process. You have to open a MIDI sampler on that channel, and then you need to edit that MIDI sampler and drag each sample onto a key in the sampler, and then you need to go back to the pads, and you need to start dragging those samples that you added into your kit onto the pads that you want to use. It is so much easier in Beatmaker 3. All you have to do is open up a new instrument and go into your imports folder or wherever it is you've saved your files and just drag them onto each individual pad. You don't have to deal with a keyboard at all if you don't want to, and that is great. Also, Beatmaker 3's sample tab is much more powerful if you ask me. I've done a whole video on how to sample in Beatmaker 3. If you want to check that out, you can find that up here, but there's a lot more that you can do with it. And once you've done everything you wanted to do with your samples, it's really easy to just slice them to the pads. And as far as I've seen, correct me if I'm wrong, as far as I've seen, there's not any real easy way to do that in Cubasis 3. So real quick, let's recap. Cubasis 3, the pros. It's more like a traditional DAW. Some would say it has a much more appealing user interface, better quantity and quality of included instruments and effects. It's more stable than Beatmaker 3. And if you buy the iPad app, it comes with an iPhone app. Also, we have that included functionality of being able to fade individual clips. The cons, it's more expensive, there's a higher learning curve, no built-in side chaining, no stop button, no individual effects tracks for individual pads within an instrument, and no MIDI exporting for individual tracks. Beatmaker 3, pros, it's much cheaper, there's a shorter learning curve, more powerful sampler, you can have individual effects for individual pads within an instrument, it supports MIDI exporting for individual tracks, and it supports native side chaining. Cons. Some would say it has a less appealing UI, less included sounds and effects, occasional instability, no included iPhone app or available iPhone app at all, and no official way to duplicate tracks. There you have it. If you ask me, both of these are powerhouse apps that can stand as full-fledged DAWs for iPad. Question of the day. Which of these will be your go-to DAW? Are you team Cubasis 3? Are you team Beatmaker 3? Let me know down in the comments. I've got some Cubasis 3 videos in the pipeline, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. And if you're looking for some great Beatmaker 3 tutorial videos, check out this playlist up here, which I will also link down in the description for some awesome videos helping you get the most out of your DAW. All right, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.